late last week, there was the Xbox Games Showcase that happened. Yes. And it was pretty much um, all games from Xbox. It was their showcase solely focusing on the games. So not necessarily the hardware or um, the services coming to their next gen platform. But uh, it was a good one. Before we get into all the other games, they did open up the show with Halo Infinite, which we all knew we were yes. going to see. Uh, so let's first talk about Halo Infinite. I know Brody's been itching to talk about <laughs> Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Brody's been loving lots of Halo. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall on the, the whole thing, I thought that showcase was fairly disappointing um relative to what other companies are putting out um it kind of reaffirms that um xbox doesn't care about this or microsoft doesn't care about their next console coming out um literally it was buzzword after buzzword most powerful console most powerful console uh most power per pixel and and then they showed halo which was pretty cool and then they showed grounded which was cool and everything else beyond that didn't catch my interest maybe just because i don't care about those games um, medium, but it, it was just I don't know. It just didn't look anything interesting. We didn't see gameplay. Studio. We saw no gameplay. Yeah, okay, you did. Really. You did okay, kind of see gameplay from medium. You did. I think the medium. We'll talk about the medium. Yeah, after, we'll get to it. We'll get that, to that. For now, Halo. One of the only games you saw a lot uh, more gameplay from. Yeah, but we did see a lot from Halo Infinite. So, yeah. Bernie, so, what were your yeah, thoughts yeah. on what we saw for Halo? So, I'm a, a huge Halo lore fan. Um, I played multiplayer i think everyone at some point played halo's multiplayer whether it was halo 3 or mm -hmm. another one but we've all played halo multiplayer at some point whether yep. it's someone's house and a lot of people as a result of that don't realize that it's not just a space marine shoot -em up they there is a huge amount of depth to the halo universe and um even just halo ce the first game if you play through the campaign you start to realize the foundation that bungie had set out of like oh my god what what is going on? It's not just you against aliens. There are multiple other factions, multiple other um, entities in this universe that span across uh, inevitably hundreds of thousands of years that this lore is now starting. Even, I guess if you want to go into it, to the beginning of time, uh, even with precursor stuff, but um, that's never been touched in games or really in, in lore stuff. So with this, I came into this saying, I want story. Halo 5 was a bit of a disappointment. They brought on a, a writer that uh, had a lackluster track record behind him. And I don't know why he was brought on as a lead writer. Halo 4 was phenomenal in opening up uh, what the universe was, dealing with Forerunner stuff. So yeah. Halo Infinite to me is, is a redemption situation uh, when it comes to story. I don't care what the graphics look like. I legitimately do not care. If it, yeah. looks, if it looks like a game that came out in 2001, I don't care. As mm -hmm. long as the story is done properly. And now they're jumping into The Banished, which was, I believe, introduced in Halo Wars, um, which I, I admittedly didn't play that. I, I know a bit of the lore there, but I didn't play those ones. Not a fan of RTS. But the, the, the Banished is cool and all, but my issue is there's a lot of unresolved stuff that we didn't even see mentioned in this. And I'm worried with 343 now saying that this is more of a spiritual reboot um, in the sense that it will follow-up stuff that happened in Guardians, but they're trying to make this game accessible to players that haven't played Halo before. And to me, that sounds like we're going to dumb everything down to the oh, go to the casual audience. And I'm worried. Maybe they won't, but I'm worried I that'll happen. And, and we talk about the created, you know, that's a big point right now. Like the mantle of responsibility is in a very um, uh, precarious spot right now. Of where it's going to end up. What there's multiple factions fighting for multiple different things. The banished are now added in as another one. Although it is mentioned that um, they're uh, they do, are working with someone, um, and there's a lot of um, you could speculate on who that's or what that's going to be. Yeah. Uh, but to me, I'm I'm worried when they say that you know the the banished are going to be the most formidable enemy that Chief has come across. When you literally are you forgetting about the didact? Are you forgetting that the created <laughs> still exists? And to me that worries yeah. me right yeah. and i'm just i'm coming in with a lot of caution yeah uh, i feel like i feel like that's always a hesitation when there's a heavily anticipated game to a series that mm -hmm. um it's been a long time since we got that great title right i feel like studios always try to go the route of well yes this is for the fans but it's also for everyone else that just wants to get into the franchise and yeah. then you 
could see that kind of spoil it for the fans that are looking to have this pickup of like all these other storylines mm -hmm. within the franchise that don't get tied up, right? Mm -hmm. I completely feel you on that one. But yeah. I but based on what we see, this is our first look at Halo. I mm -hmm. have to say, like, although we weren't getting that story, sometimes it is nice not to get that story for a franchise that you love. Because for me, I prefer to be surprised. I prefer to see the gameplay. No, I don't need it to look, like, realistic. We saw them try it. It wasn't good. I want it to look like Halo. And I think what they showed here, it does look like Halo. It piques my interest with the gameplay. And I, I was happy not seeing any of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. For me, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I get where you're coming from, Brody, because you're very into the lore. Like, mm -hmm. I follow the lore, but I think a little a little looser than you do. Um, but I don't. For I, I like the prospect of it. Just takes place like we lost, and that's it. And here we are now, jumping into this lost battle, trying to piece together what had happened in the months before this game started. And, and, you know, especially too, because they, they showed in the gameplay that it's going to have like this open world element to it, being able to go out and explore and see what's going on in the world, maybe get tiny little bits and pieces of, of story and what happened beforehand and, and how we lost what, like what's going on with the Didact, what's going on with the forerunners. And I mean, yeah, they're probably working with the, uh, with the banish. I think that's a fair assumption because they got to wrap up that story somehow. Right. Um, and it just looks interesting to me. I, it's just, oh man, I hate the console war that, that rages on in the comment section of this, of these kind of videos or, or for these games, you know, whether it's Spider-Man and me talking about it being 60 FPS and then Xbox fanboys being like, yeah, well, our games are 60 FPS already. Or where, whether it's me saying, Hey, I'm excited for Halo or PlayStation fanboys being like, yeah, okay. But it doesn't look like it's literally real life. Uh, even though yeah, yeah. it's not real none of it's real <laughs> um you know like I, I just i'm so tired of it and, and i've said this on twitter and i guess i'll reiterate it again but i've been trying to make this point i'm trying to drive it home and it's okay it's okay to prefer one console over the other if you like playstation over xbox that's not my issue people were misinterpreting some of the tweets that i was putting out and saying well caboose nobody can afford to get or not everybody can afford to get both consoles and not everybody can you know get the series x and the playstation 5 and that's that's fine if yeah. you as the consumer want to choose one console over the other, that's okay. My issue lies within, I bought this one console, I now have to hate the other one. And that there's no other option. You know, If you as a person can genuinely sit there, as a PlayStation fan, can genuinely sit there and look me in the eye and say that Xbox Game Pass isn't the single greatest deal in gaming right now, you're out of your mind. You're yeah. out of your mind. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It is not a conversation. It's not being like subjective or having an opinion. No, objectively, Xbox Game Pass is the single greatest deal in gaming right now. It is the most pro-consumer yeah. thing in gaming right now. You have over 100 titles available on PC, 200 plus on console, and it's for $15 a month that includes Xbox Live. If you played one game a month, you're getting your money's worth. Yeah. And there's over 200 titles available on console. So that being said... PlayStation definitely has some of the best exclusives available. Ghost of Tsushima might be my game of the generation. So, hell yeah, there's a lot of value in PlayStation. I see the value in both consoles, but just to get back to the conversation about Halo specifically, yeah. the gameplay looks like a lot of fun. It looks like that. The, it looks like the natural progression of Halo 3 that I feel like I always wanted. You know? Mm -hmm. Sprint. Sprint is sprint. It is what it is now. That's going to be a part of Halo <laughs> Oh, I love forever. Sprint. To me, and well, I, here's the th here's the thing that to, to anyone complaining about sprint do you not think that a dude with physical <laughs> augmentations and a suit that enhances his abilities can run yeah no he yeah. only walks it is what he it is really slow it's, it's a headache okay <laughs> like that one game death stranding yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and he has this, all this and equipment walking simulator i know um <laughs> But like, yeah, I mean, and, and also people give 343 a lot of crap for Sprint, but they don't realize that like that was Bungie's idea. Like they're the ones who introduced it into the franchise. Um, but regardless, Sprint is what it is. It's it's in the game now that I, I'm OK with that. I think that is the natural progression of Halo. But it definitely looks like they finally dialed it back a little bit on the 
the bells and whistles, you know, the dashing, the ground pounds, the aiming down sights with every single gun, having mm -hmm. that ability, you know, like the way you could float in midair if you're aiming in midair. I mean, that all might end up being in the game still, but it looks like it, it looks like it won't be. It looks like yeah. now you got your you stuff. Don't like that stuff? I, I, I still had fun with Halo 5's multiplayer, but I also was like, okay, this isn't very Halo, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want it to just still feel like I'm playing the sequel to Halo 3, you know, or the sequel to Halo 4. Because Halo 4, I feel like, did it a lot better than Halo 5 did. It had the armor abilities, but that's because there was that in Halo Reach already, you know? Sprinting and, and invisibility, jetpacks, all that stuff, that was in Halo Reach. So, yeah, of course they're going to include that in Halo 4 because Bun that was Bungie's idea. It's just a natural progression. Yeah. Um, but then when you started to get like the dashing abilities and the ground pounds, I feel like it was just a little too much. It was starting to feel like I'm not playing a Halo game. I'm playing a Halo skin over some other FPS, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. but Halo Infinite looks like it's going to feel like a Halo game. And that's what excites me. And I also do not care about the graphics. I am not buying a Halo game for it to look pretty. That's yeah. just, that is the last of my priorities with a Halo game. That being yeah. said, you don't it want it on, to look outdated, though. For sure, that's yeah. like right, like I said, uh, or like I was about to say. Um, if you're going to bring something to the Xbox Showcase, which is supposed to be our first look at Halo gameplay, you better bring the thunder. You want to convince consumers to buy the console or to buy the game, and not to discredit general consumers or to try and make it sound like they're dumb, but they want to they want the game to look good. They want it to look pretty, especially because that's starting to become the promise of this next gen or almost the promise of every new console release is that, hey, game look pretty. Um, so the fact that it just that it did look a little almost Halo 3, maybe not even as good as Halo 3 is concerning. There was rumor and talk that the demo or the, the build that they were playing on was from January of this year. But even so, why are you? Why is this build from January being the one that's going to be the first time we're showcasing gameplay for Halo Infinite? I don't know. Again, well, for myself, I don't care about graphics. But why doesn't it look super good? <laughs> why is this what you're presenting to us? In argument, you know, I feel like with everything that's happening in the world, that could put a hinder on what they wanted to show. That's true. One thing I was that's disappointed true. that we didn't see, and you know, I think the game did look fine like it looked fine it's not beautiful but you're not gonna play halo for the graphics i still want it to look like a halo game when you are when people are streaming and you're going through channels you know what a halo game looks like so that's what you want that's what i want to see um and the environment the sun looked beautiful that's good enough for me um but what i was more disappointed was that we didn't get to see any multiplayer at all and I think I think that's something that was a lost opportunity. But yet again, I don't know if that's because of the state of the world right now. They weren't able to get that demo together to showcase a good multiplayer experience because we know whenever they showcase multiplayer, it's going to be ripped apart to try to see if yeah. there's any tweaks that should have been made um, rather yeah. than the choices they will take, right? But that, that was the only thing I think for me from the Halo uh, Infinite showcase that uh, i was a bit disappointed with so i'm bit anytime you hear 343 talk they keep saying this game is still very much in development and this is what worries me is i feel like they're actually under a lot of pressure right now from microsoft to make sure that this releases yeah. alongside yeah. the system um and i just don't think the game is ready and that makes me worry about where that story is going to go they did mention that down the road they're going to have it um almost expansion like where stories and and other parts uh of the the universe will be added on afterwards that's the question is uh, the thing is though are these going to be major plot points or are these going to be things that are are more of side stories a backstory to this character you've seen but yeah. it's more of like you're diving in that character rather than you're pushing the plot along and i'm 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 wondering what that's going to be um to me if they can make the main story again resolve a lot of the issues that were still open in guardians expand on the universe i'd rather those side things be um universe expansion pieces that are are not necessary but they help you involve yourself more in the world i want to make I'll sure you that main story is done 
I'll tell you what, I think, especially looking at the fact that when they when they opened that map, it was very like hub world esque. Yeah. Like, hey, here is one of potentially many massive explorable areas. Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> three four three. A lot of folks who used to work at Bungie work at three four three. What's Bungie working on right now? Destiny. Do you see a potential scenario where they try to destiny it with with big like year round expansions to story content and so, multiplayer? They said no. They said that's not what their goal is. Okay. Um, so which to me is good because I would have freaked if that was the case because what you're doing is you're limiting yourself to right. being on that Halo the entire time. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's not the expanse of the universe of Halo. I mean, all those other things that were going on throughout the other games didn't take place on this specific halo right yeah. this is a, a new location we've never been to before um and if you res um, restrict yourself to just telling stories on that halo you completely cut off any opportunity to tell a good story right i think that's fair